Hey there viewers, Buddy here. Today we are looking at value wins. We are looking at things like how they are formed, the characteristics, as well as the effects. Basically everything you need to know for the exams. I will also be including diagrams that very often appear in exam papers. So let's start off with catabatic wins, right? Catabatic wins are winds that flow downhill from higher elevations such as mountains or hills to lower areas like valleys. The word catabatic comes from the Greek word katabatikos, meaning to go down. Now this definition can be used in your exams, so please feel free to take a screenshot and keep it for whenever you are actually studying. So how do catabatic winds form, right? What are the factors that cause them to form? The first would be nighttime cooling. So at night, the land surface cools down quickly after the sun sets, and in hilly or mountainous areas, the air near the slopes cools down faster because cold air is denser and heavier than warm air. So let me break this down and give you just the main points. So basically at night, your land surface will cool, right? And the air that is directly above that will also become cold and heavy. So this cold air will then move down the slope and into the valley, and this will create a downhill wind, right? So that's our very first point. Our second point states, cold air sinks. Now as the air cools, it becomes heavier and starts to flow downhill along the slopes. This movement of cold, dense air is what we call a catabatic wind. Remember, gravity is going to pull this heavy wind down the slopes, right? And that is basically how we get the downslope movement. Our third point states, settling in valleys. So the air flows down into the valley, replacing the warmer air and causing the temperature in the valley to drop significantly, especially during clear and calm nights. So this point is basically emphasizing the fact that once the cold air reaches the bottom of the valley, it will then push any warm air that is within the valley upwards, right? And this is going to make the valley very cold. Now let's look at some characteristics of catabatic winds. The first characteristic would be the temperature of the wind itself. Remember, it's going to be a cold wind. So since catabatic winds are cold air flowing downhill, they generally bring cooler temperatures to the areas that they reach. Now this can be asked to you in an exam in multiple ways. That's why it's best for you to truly understand it rather than just memorizing it. The second characteristic will refer to the strength of the wind. So it can either be gentle or strong. Catabatic winds can range from light breezes to stronger gusts, depending on how steep the slope is and how much the air has cooled. So there are two important factors that we can identify in this point, right? The first will be the gradient of the slope. And obviously a gradient is basically how steep a slope is. And the second will be how much air has cooled, right? That will determine the strength of the wind. The third characteristic would be that it is common during the night time. These winds usually happen at night or during the early morning when the ground cools down the fastest. Now this point is pretty self-explanatory, right? So before we get to the influence of catabatic winds on farming, are we all good? Are you guys confused about anything? If you do have any questions, then please leave it in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So let's look at the influence of catabatic winds on farming as this can be asked as an essay question in your exam. So the first influence would be frost risk. Catabatic winds bring cold air down into valleys, which can lead to a significant drop in temperature, especially at night. This can cause frost formation, which poses a serious threat to crops, particularly those sensitive to freezing conditions like fruits and vegetables. Now, frost is actually a layer of ice crystals, and uh, frost will form when your water vapor in the air will turn directly into solid ice. Right? And this will generally happen on surfaces that are below freezing temperatures. And when you're going to get a significant drop in temperature, frost is going to form on the floor of the valley. Farmers may choose to grow oranges on the floor of the valley and the cold conditions assist in destroying insects which damage crops. Now farmers also choose uh, oranges because oranges have a thick skin so the frost is not very likely to affect these oranges, right? Cold weather crops. In areas with persistent catabatic winds, farmers may opt to grow hardier, cold resistant crops like root vegetables, example carrots and potatoes, that are less susceptible to frost damage. 
Now we are looking at the influence of catabatic winds on settlements. Remember the previous slide was talking about the influence of catabatic winds on farming. So the first influence would be frost pockets. So catabatic winds can create frost pockets in valleys, making these areas less attractive for settlement. Historically, people have tended to settle on higher ground away from cold air in the valley floor to avoid harsh night temperatures. So humans generally prefer to live in warmer areas, right? As some of you may know that if it's a nice cold night and you snuggled in and you just found a comfortable spot under the blanket, you then get the feeling that you need to go to the bathroom. And now you need to get out of that comfortable spot and go out in the cold again. Now people don't want that, right? They want to be in warm areas. So this will definitely influence where they want to live. The next influence will be temperature extremes. So settlements located in valleys may experience significant nighttime cooling due to catabatic winds, which can affect how homes are built and insulated. Houses may need better insulation to protect residents from the cold air that settles in the valley at night. So if you're living in a valley that is very cold, obviously your home will need to be insulated so you're going to need things like your underfloor heating and things like that in order to stay warm. Now we are looking at the influence of catabatic winds on transport. We are no longer looking at settlements. So the first would be road conditions, right? Catabatic winds can lead to the formation of ice on roads in valleys, making transportation dangerous, especially during early morning commutes. The colder air in valleys can cause moisture on roads to freeze, creating hazardous driving conditions. Now this can be disastrous as it can cause horrible accidents. So this is definitely a negative aspect of catabatic winds. Our next influence will be visibility issues. In some areas, catabatic winds can cause fog or mist to form in the cooler valley air, reducing visibility for drivers and making road travel even more challenging, particularly at night or in the early morning. Now again, this will lead to treacherous conditions on the road. So as you can see, this is the diagram that I was talking about. Now I have taken the liberty of making it nice and colorful as that will make it easier for you to understand. Now, if you do see this in the exam, it is going to be black and white and it's not going to be color coded like this, right? So let's quickly go through it and understand what's taking place. So first we can see the presence of a moon and stars and that will basically tell you that it's taking place at night. So automatically you should think of a catabatic wind, right? So the white arrows that are facing downwards will represent the downward movement of cool air. And then you can see at the bottom of the valley, there's a blue icon and that will basically represent frost. Now we can then see two arrows pointing upwards and that will represent the upward movement of warm air in the valley that is going to be pushed upwards by the cold air. We can then see midway up into the valley, there's a presence of a thermal belt. Now the thermal belt in a valley is basically a warmer zone that is found halfway up into your valley, right? That will be the warmest part of that valley. Now, if you do find that this diagram comes out in your exam, you may find out that it's not um, labeled. You can have to either label it yourself or they can ask you various questions based on that diagram. So that's basically most of what you need to know in terms of the diagram and catabatic winds. We will now look at anabatic winds, right? So anabatic winds are the exact opposite of catabatic winds. Remember, catabatic winds are cold winds that will move downhill at night. Anabatic winds are winds that occur during the day and it is the movement of warm air up a slope, right? So let's look at the given definition, right? Anabatic winds are upward moving winds that flow up the slopes of hills or mountains during the day. The word anabatic comes from the Greek word anabatikos, meaning to rise. As you can see, it is the exact opposite of catabatic winds. So if you can remember one, just think of the opposite and there you have it. So how do anabatic winds form? The first reason is because of daytime heating. So during the day, the sun heats the slopes of hills and mountains more quickly than the surrounding air. The ground warms up and the air directly above it becomes warmer as well. Now this again is the exact same thing that happens with your catabatic winds. Your slopes will heat up and the air directly above that will also become warm. The second reason as to how anabatic winds form is because warm air rises. Remember, since warm air is less dense, it rises. As the air heats up along the slope, it starts to flow upward, following the incline of the mountain or hill. 
Now, a very important thing to remember is that warm air rises and cold air sinks. Right? That is very important to remember. The third reason is because of wind formation. This upward movement of warm air creates an anabatic wind that moves from the lower valley areas up to the higher slopes. Now, this point again is pretty self-explanatory. We will now go over the characteristics of anabatic winds. And the first characteristic is that it is a warm wind. Because these winds are caused by the sun heating the ground, anabatic winds tend to be warmer than the surrounding air. The next characteristic of anabatic winds will be that it occurs during the day, right? It is a daytime phenomenon. So anabatic winds occur during the day when the sun is shining, usually strongest in the afternoon when the surface heating is at its peak. So now we will look at the effects of anabatic winds on the climate. And the first effect would be an increased temperature. Right? Anabatic winds can cause the upper slopes to warm up more quickly than the valley floor, influencing temperature variations within a short distance. The next effect would be cloud formation. Right? If there is enough moisture in the air, anabatic winds can carry that moisture upward, sometimes resulting in the formation of clouds along the mountain ridges. This is why you often see clouds forming near mountaintops in the afternoon. Now let's take a look at this diagram, right? As you can see, it is a lot simpler than the diagram that we did of catabatic winds. We can now see the presence of a sun, which is basically indicating to you that this wind is taking place during the day. And we can see there are two arrows that are flowing up the slopes, and these two arrows will basically represent the flow of warm air up the slopes. As you can see, it's pretty simple. There's not too much to learn there. And that's a wrap on valley winds, right? Uh, now you know exactly how anabatic and catabatic winds work and why valleys have those interesting temperature differences, right? Whether it's the warm air rising up the slopes during the day or it's cold air sinking down at night, these winds play a very big role in our local climate. I want to thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you found that this video helped you, then please give it a like. If you want more geography videos, then please subscribe. Got any questions or topics you'd like me to cover next? Please feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time, keep learning, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one. God bless you.